How Small Business Moves Forward, leading together with Mark Langlois and Jeff Killen from International Custom Products based in Scarborough, Ontario. They are one of a number of Canadian companies doing whatever it takes to absolutely upend their existing operation and get ready to pitch in and do whatever's necessary. Boy, if there's a theme today, it's ready, willing, and able. And Mark, uh, let's start with you a little bit, and then we'll go to Jeff. But uh, Mark, tell us, first of all, so everyone watching can really get a, gra uh, a grasp of what ICP, International Custom Products, does currently, and now what you're ready to do in terms of helping medical professionals on the front line. Well, we have a, a 67,000 square foot facility in, in Toronto, uh, in Scarborough, Ontario. And uh, we, we currently uh, do about 80% of our business is in the defense industry and the other 20% uh, services the commercial industry. And right now we've had a number of calls over the past few weeks and we're, we're basically turning our factory upside down and getting ready to, uh, to help out in this, uh, in this great cause. And Jeff, uh, apparently the, the biggest need right now that you're hearing about is, is medical gowns. Is that correct? Expand on that. Exactly. So we're hearing that uh, supplies have been depleted across Canada, across North America for gowns and masks. And we're, we're trying as hard as we can to adapt and retool uh, to go from a defense and a commercial manufacturer to a company that can support the domestic manufacture of this equipment and get it to the frontline workers as fast as possible. Tell us, Mark, what goes through your mind when you suddenly realize you wake up one day and your whole business has to change. Like, how do you process that as, as, as a leader? And, and, and then we'll go to you, Jeff, and how, you know, as an executive team. It's been, uh, I'm not going to lie. It's been, it's been stressful. Um, the whole team has been stressed, but they've, uh, they've, they've rallied together. And it's, it's been every, every day, every hour, every minute has been different from what our government's telling us to do. And uh, our, our team has been just, I've been, I'm so proud of them. They've just been uh, rallying together, working all hours and uh, doing what it takes to get ready for, for, uh, for the effort. And it just occurred to me, Jeff, like, because you're more responsible for the for the operations, the actual getting stuff done part. What are some of the things you need? It's like, I'm just thinking whoever could be watching this, like we have no idea who's going to be watching and sharing. I'm thinking mm -hmm. other jurisdictions, maybe from Tennessee to Texas to, you know, who knows where might need medical gowns. What would you need? What do they need to know from you? Well, there's three main things that we need right now as, as a company that's trying to turn around and make this stuff. Um, we need to know what the requirements are. We need to know what the material requirements are for it. And I would say more important, we need staff. We need to hire some people to bring in to make the volumes that are required. There's so you have people now, but you, what you're saying is basically, do. you've got a team ready, but you can already anticipate. You've got teams you're ready to go. People. And we need as many people as we can because the, the, we've got hundreds of sewing machines waiting there. We've got, like Mark said, a huge facility. Um, we just need people in there to help us put this together. So if there's people out there that want to join this, this fight, they want to help us make this equipment, support the frontline workers. We need people that have experience working with commercial sewing machines. Mark, I'm thinking uh, back to uh, history. And I know, I know ICP does a lot of work for the defense industry. So I thought you guys would like to know that there was a company in Weston, Ontario, uh, Canadian Cycle and Motor Company. And back in World War II, they made bicycle, uh, bicycles, they made hockey skates, and then almost overnight, um, they got into uh, manufacturing gun parts, uh, tripods for Bren guns. Uh, CCM basically reinvented itself. Have you considered that maybe that's what ICP is doing right now? You're taking a page out of what a lot of small companies did during the war to help this new war we're in. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I'm sure as has everyone, I've been doing a lot of reading over, over the past at least a month. Um, we've actually have uh, some contacts in China, so even more than a month. And I've been doing a lot of reading on, on, on leadership under, under times like this. And uh, it's, it's just been 
a whirlwind of, of how we're having to readapt. Do I envision us, you know, long-term being a medical company? No, but uh, I, I envision us sort of turning the factory on its side and, and doing whatever it takes to, to help us get through this. I think it's it's a, it's a it's a great thing for other businesses to know. We're doing these uh, series of conversations about how small business moves forward. Is there any advice, uh, Jeff? Maybe you can give on what businesses need to know for those others who are looking to pivot and pivot very quickly. Well, I think one of the biggest things is you have to communicate. Um, companies that you may or people that you may have traditionally looked at as a competitor uh, in this space are not anymore it's now an all-in event. Just like as you're talking about companies coming together to support the war effort, it's no longer, well, I make a bike and he makes a bike and now we're competing for market space. No, no, no. What can you do better than your old competitor so that you can come together and deliver a needed product to those frontline workers as, as fast as possible? So what I'm hearing is a spirit, a spirit if you will, of coopetition as, as opposed to competition. Does that Makes sense exactly. To you guys. It's all about teamwork. Right now, there's there's no time for chasing profits. There's no time for you know uh, making yourself a little bit more stable in the market. It's all about what can we do because this thing is spreading and it's spreading fast. So we need to do everything we can to to try and help the people that are fighting it. Yeah, let, let me add to that, Jeff. Um, we've been in, in in contact with a number of our competitors over the past couple of weeks. Um, trying to help one another. Okay, you know, what, what are you hearing? How can you get equipment? Can I help you with my equipment? Where are you getting raw material? All those sorts of things. Uh, we've, been, we've been in constant contact and, and, and to use your words, it's, uh, it's not, not, not a competition. It's a, I actually can't remember where the word you said. <laughs> Co-opetition. <laughs> I don't want to repeat it because I'll trip over my tongue. <laughs> No, and it's true. And no. government's doing it very well too. They're co they're collecting a bunch of information and making sure that that those connections can be established between different companies. So, I mean, that's what I would do. Just continue to reach out. It's difficult. Everyone's working from home. I mean, we have trouble reaching each other within our own office sometimes with the phone lines jammed. But don't stop. It there's there's lives on the line. And I mean, just like you said, World War Two. Every, our, my grandparents had their calling, right? My grandmother worked in a factory supporting the war effort. My grandfather's fought uh, on the front lines. This is our, this is our fight, it, but it's home. And it's a lot of the times it's, it's those people that we need to protect and those frontline workers that are doing everything they can to, to try and stop this. Hey guys, I, I really enjoyed this chat. The theme is ready, willing, and able. Mark, can you bring it home for us and kind of, you know, issue that, uh, that thing that people need to know who are watching this, like how do they get in touch with you? How do people help? How can people help right now with what you guys are trying to do in terms of, uh, you know, manufacturing medical gowns? Yeah, so you can, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to Jeff. Uh, if you have uh, raw materials that, that go into gowns, into masks, if you know of, a, of a, somebody looking for a job and they have any sewing experience, uh, we're, we're looking to hire. Um, and if you know of anybody that maybe uh, makes uh, gowns or masks and, and they just can't handle the, the, the overflow right now, we're, uh, we're willing to help out. And, and I don't think it would hurt either, uh, fellas, if uh, someone who knew someone in in levels of government uh, that needs to hear what you guys have to offer. It wouldn't hurt if that message got shared either through uh, different social media channels. Yeah, we didn't actually speak about that yet, but uh, Jeff and I have been on a number of calls with uh, different levels of government um, to try and uh, help out with their effort. They're, they're trying to uh, do a, a marriage sort of session of, of matching up uh, companies and, and uh, and workers and whatnot to try and get that going too. So we've been, we've been uh, talking with many levels of government. No, I agree, but we need to share this message as much as possible. We need to let people know that we're ready and willing to help, that we need more people to join our team to help us grow this effort. And we need any potential partners to contact us and to help us contact others and get this message out that it's time to come together. Really, really uh, applaud what you guys are doing. Uh, I think uh, there isn't anyone in business who can't take a, a page out of the ICP International Custom Products Playbook and uh, 
This is what it's all about, uh, coopetition, a new spirit of coopetition, uh, leading together in these unpredictable times.